I've been wanting to make this video for a really long time. In this week's episode, we're going to do a mini deep dive comparing a clinical versus a professional master's, the benefits. We're going to look at which one should you do specifically in Australia. We're going to start off by exploring what's projected to students as like the best pathway for them to go down. And then we're going to explore the pros of both the clinical and the professional masters to demonstrate that the argument is a little bit more nuanced in my own opinion. At the end of the day though, picking a post-grad pathway is a really individual choice and it's gonna come down to you deciding what's best for you. But hopefully this video will give you a little bit of insight, especially if you're kind of on the fence, you're not too sure. I hope that this just helps you kind of make up your mind or get some more information. So with all of that said, Let's get into this video. Okay, so let's start off by talking about what's considered to be the best pathway. And if you don't know it already, it's clinical masters. A clinical masters is kind of like the quote unquote, the creme de la creme of psychology. It's the best program to get into. And one of the main reasons for this is because students that go down this pathway are more likely to have higher earning power. Of course, there's lots of other reasons too, but this is sort of one of the, the main reasons why it really stands out as a good choice to get into. So during our undergrad, I'm sure a lot of students will relate to this. There is a lot of pressure on us to try and get really good grades so that we can make it into an honors program and then hopefully get a first class so that we get the opportunity to go on and try and get into a clinical master's program. This belief was instilled in me, not just from uni my university, but also from my mom, who's a clinical psychologist. She would sort of project, not in a bad way, but just a, a sense that, look, clinical masters is what you need to aim for. Yeah, you can go for the professional masters and get registered but the clinical masters is, is the better option that's what you should be striving for back when I was an undergrad as well I should mention it it's coming close to nearly a decade ago so uh, I don't know if things have changed much I really hope they're starting to and I hope this video helps create the change but back then I should mention there weren't many opportunities to do a professional masters it was it was still an up-and-coming thing uh, it's definitely changed now we've seen lots of professional masters programs pop up which is really exciting exciting to see, but they're still competing against the, the coveted, amazing clinical master's program. So this is still a strong competitor. Ultimately, look, I don't think that one pathway is better than the other. I think that they both have their own pros and cons, and I'm going to focus solely on the benefits in this video. So let's start to unpack it together now. Let's begin with a clinical master's. I put together the list of pros of doing a clinical master's with my mom because I haven't done one, so I don't know all the and outs but from what I can gather talking to her these are some of the main benefits of doing a master's in clinical psychology number one is that you receive really high quality intensive training supervisors observe your sessions you can get a lot of feedback from them you do deep work into understanding clinical disorders and you also get to do your own research in a nutshell it is a two-year program where you get high quality support in training and nurturing your skills as a clinician number two as we've already already discussed, you are more likely to have high earning power and this is because you can offer a higher Medicare rebate of $136.35, which means that basically you can charge more for a session. The client still doesn't have to pay as much because they can get that rebate from the government and you can earn you know, you can earn a little bit more. Number three is that it allows you the endorsed title of clinical psychologist, which is protected in Australia by APRA. You can only have access to this title if you've got the qualification a master's in clinical psychology. Finally, number four is that you have really great networking opportunities. During your studies, you have access to working alongside clinical psychologists who are in academia. They're high performing individuals with a wealth of knowledge where you can start to learn from that. And when you're endorsed, you'll also be able to get access to the APS Clinical College, which only clinical psychologists can use, where you can share and learn from other clinical psychologists working in the field, share the latest updates, share the latest topics with one another. So these are some of the main benefits that my mom and I discussed about doing a clinical master's in psychology. However, the list is not exhaustive. If there's anything else that you think we've missed, please leave comments down below to help 
fellow students who are trying to make a choice, let's keep the conversation rolling. I definitely encourage feedback or other suggestions. All right, now let's explore the benefits of why some people intentionally pick a professional master's instead of a clinical master's, which also highlights why I think the argument is a little bit more nuanced than clinical psychology being the best. Number one, it's quicker. It's five years instead of six. And look, I know this is only a one year difference, but honestly, that one year really does make a big difference, especially if you're doing this in your 20s. You have a little less burnout and you get a little bit more of your time back, which allows for more balance. Number two is that you don't have the weight of the word clinical in your job title. This point might sound a little bit counterintuitive, but I guess I'm directing it towards people that are still in their 20s, still figuring out life, working out what they want to do. Not having the word clinical in your job title can be kind of kind of more liberating. Of course, being a psychologist, that word still comes with a lot of responsibility that everyone in the profession takes really seriously. However, not having that word clinical psychologist just takes a little bit of the pressure off. Number three is that theoretically, you're more likely to have less debt and more earning power early on. Both a professional and a clinical masters do offer Commonwealth supported places, which means they reduce your fee. However, these are competitive to get into Everything in psychology is competitive. <laughs> At least with a professional master's, it's only five years of full-time study that you're paying, as opposed to a clinical master's where it's six. Plus, during your one-year placement working as a provisional psychologist, you are going to get paid for that. Provided that you score a placement where you do get paid, but there's so many out there, there is a shortage of provisional psychologists right now, so the market is also in your favor. In contrast, during a clinical master's, when you're doing your placements, you do not get paid for working as a provisional psychologist. It's really rough. You're, you're studying, you're working to some extent, but you're not actually getting paid for that work. That's probably a big driver for people actually choosing the professional masters because it's just not affordable to study full time and not be working. It's really hard to do that in a clinical masters. Finally, number four is that you have more scope to be creative and flexible with your professional masters program. During that one year work Working in your internship, you can pick wherever you want to work, provided that it meets the requirements of APRA to become a registered psychologist. So there's lots of different areas of work that you could try out, like private practice, working for an organization, rehab, working in prisons, schools, hospitals, the army, sports centers. There is so much scope for you to try out different things during your internship. And theoretically, you could try out as many different placements as you like. For clinical master's students, they can only do two placements and it has to be with companies that are connected to the university and the students might not get a lot of say in what they do for their internship. The final thing that I'll say is that if you end up doing a professional master's and then get your general registration as a psychologist and realize, hey, I actually like clinical work. I wish I did a clinical master's. The study doesn't have to stop for you there. You still have the opportunity to get your clinical endorsement because in Australia, we are starting to see more and more bridging programs pop up, which is a one-year clinical master's allowing you endorsement as a clinical psychologist. And you can do that after you get your general registration. Although they're competitive to get into like all things in psychology, we're starting to see more and more of these available, which is really exciting within the psychology community to see. It also means that students who aren't too sure if clinical work is for them, because really you can only try it out when you get into a master's program. At least with a professional master's, it's one year. You can get a test taste to see if you like it, get some work experience in it. And if you do, then you can get the one year bridging program master's endorsement, especially in your 20s when you're not too sure what you're doing with your life. Ultimately though, both pathways have their own merit. It really comes down to you, the individual, to pick which is the best for you. In this video, I did shine a little bit more of a spotlight on professional masters because I just feel that it's kind of neglected. It doesn't get as good a rep as clinical. I think universities kind of project this as the 
better pathway. Honestly, I think they both come with their own advantages. It's up to you to figure out which one you want to go for. And I hope this video just gave you a bit more perspective. I hope it helps you figure out what to do. Uh, if you want to find out more about other pathways you can take to become a psychologist in Australia, I'm going to leave a video uh, somewhere on this screen to check out. Um, and I hope that's helpful too. All right, have an amazing week. I will talk to you guys again soon. All right, take care. Bye.